Hey everybody, Zeus Laser here, bringing you a guide on how to tank Wandering Palace speedruns as a paladin. I think this guide is important because Wandering Palace seems to be a very popular spot to farm for mythology and philosophy stones. So what we do here is I start off, um, I wait for the healer to cast stone skin on me to mitigate the damage that I take running to the destination points. Uh, nobody should be casting until I start to flash and take down the mobs. So I start with a flash in the Tomberries and sprint. It's important to sprint and I see a lot of tanks not do that because it stops all the adds that are chasing you from hitting you. So that is mitigating a lot of damage and doesn't let your healer fall too far behind when he has to start healing you with all those mobs on you because tanks take a tremendous amount of damage here. So I stack all the mobs up and I pull the first pack to the end of the room and the best way to hold threat is to just flash, flash, flash until you're out of mana. And when you're out of mana, you spam Riot Blade and Circle of Scorn. And flash when you have enough mana to do so. Uh, that's why you see um, Bards to be very popular in these runs. And that seems to be what a lot of groups are running with only because they have a mana song, which not only increases your mana, which in itself increases your threat, but it also requires a lot less downtime for the healer and for the tank, me, to continue pulling because a lot of tanks like to wait to have full MP to continue pulling with and without a bard. That process is a lot slower. So what I do here for the second pull is a strategy where the black mage sleeps all the mobs except for the marked tomberry. And the DPS here goes ahead and single targets this tomberry down. And when the tomberry is kind of close to dying, the mage starts to sleep and the only mob you can't sleep on this pull is the Tomberries. So you'll have two Tomberries in this pull, and it's important to mark the one that you're killing just in case they go ahead and kill the one that is not marked, and that won't be the one that opens the door. So when the marked Tomberry dies, the door opens, and the, all the mobs should be slept. So I run, I sprint to this boss. I really don't have much TP, but it just helps get me to my position faster. I stand on the edge of the room here, uh, where the gate spawns, at the beginning of the fight, and I have a DPS pull to me, and I flash it off. Uh, it's important that the DPS runs to the tank and not just pulls the boss in hopes that the tank will just pull it off. Um, so just make sure tanks that you give your DPS a heads up if they're not familiar with pulling the boss to run the um, boss to you so you can flash it off. And when the gate goes up, all those mobs that you had previously slept before de-aggro and go back to their, their original locations. So there you go. So that just completely wiped out one big pull that you have and that makes this go a lot faster and also a lot smoother. So you go ahead and take this boss down as normal. It's up to the DPS to take him down as fast as possible. And the reason why I just keep him here is because while the DPS and healer were waiting for the mobs to despawn, they probably already positioned themselves to where they want to be uh, starting the boss. So I just keep him here and when the boss is about to die, as you'll see in a second, um, I pull towards the other end of the room. That way I'm ready to go ahead and run up and hit that device the second the boss dies. And when I know that I have threat or decent amount of threat on the boss, I go ahead and start being conservative with my TP and my mana. So I have enough TP to be able to sprint all the way up to the next pull, which is from the start of the room all the way to the end of the room. So I'll fast forward here um, to the beginning of the next pull. So I'm at the end of the wall here. The boss is about to die and I go ahead and run and hit that device while I wait for the DPS and the healer to catch up. Hit the device and at this point I'll be about halfway on TP or about 600 where that's a perfect amount of time that you need to sprint. So I start to sprint right after I pull this first Tomberry. Um, you don't need to flash all the mobs that you run by because nobody should be casting until you start until you stop, rather, to start holding aggro on all the mobs. So I sprint to the next set all the way to the edge, and I'm ready to stop, and I have my cooldowns up uh, to make it easier on the healer to catch up when I have all these mobs on me. And once again, I just spam flash until my mana's out. And then, once again, I just spam Riot Blade and flash on cooldown when I can, when I have enough mana to do so. So as you see here, the mobs in this pack start to cast um, abilities that the tanks can dodge. 
So what I recommend to do is put your camera angle above you because sometimes it can be difficult to see with the barred circle down. So I just go ahead and I can basically just mitigate all unnecessary damage that um, I could potentially take, but that could also kill me. I mean, healers can heal through it, but if your healer is not as experienced as other healers could be, it could be a turning point for your run. You don't want any wipes, obviously, in doing a 10 to 12 minute run. So I pick up the Lantnors with the healer while the DPS goes and position themselves to devices. So the door's open and I'm ready to pull for um, the next set. So I run up here and I don't stop. And I think this is a good clip because it shows this Tom Barry King here padding and I think a lot of groups get worried about him. So how you avoid him and how you deal with him is you just go ahead and sprint by him and sprint all the way past the door just a little bit past the door and when doing that you bring the casters down with you um, to a point where you can have all of the melee stacked on these casters here because sometimes the casters can stray away and that just and they're not in range of the cleave and that just kind of makes the run go a little bit slower because you'll have to end up single targeting them down when you could just have them stacked up all together and die in unison with the other mobs so just a quick pro tip here while I wait for these to be DPS down is you always got to make sure um, or not always but it just helps the DPS when you always stack the mobs in the barred circle it just helps his AOE and helps the mobs die faster so the mobs are about to die here and I'm going to start picking up the lantern oils as fast as I can and there's two here that you need to pick up so I pick up the oils and the healer and one DPS should stay back here um, and get ready to run into the door and pull the boss when I come back. So I sprint here with one DPS and I pull this, these two mobs here. I just taunt them and pull them back because I know my DPS is clear of the Tomberry King that pats there. Um, if he is not clear of that, I stand there and take the first hit and run back so he's chasing me, which gives the DPS enough time to hit that and run back. So I ran back and I'm sprinting and I'm going to go ahead and lock the mobs out like I did uh, on the first boss. I have a DPS pulled to me and stack on me so I can flash it off. And these two mobs here get locked out of the fight again. It just makes it go quicker. It's less mobs to kill. So I get aggro. And I do my best to save my MP here to pick up that initial um, ad spawn. So the gate closes and I start running towards the ad spawn because it spawns basically immediately after the gate goes up. So I use this clip here to just let the tanks know that it is possible with DPS to pull aggro here, uh, especially uh, more experienced, more geared DPS, th there's definitely going to pull aggro at some points. I it's possible, I mean it's not always going to happen. So what I recommend to do is just flash, flash and spam Riot Blade and taunt. Uh, make sure to have an instant um, off global to use after you taunt so you can get aggro right away. So we just proceed to kill the boss as normal, and um, depending on your DPS, you might not get a second set of adds, but if you do get the second set of adds, you want to keep them more towards the middle of the room, because you can just so you can just pick those adds up right away and have the DPS cleave them down. Or, if the boss is close enough to die, you can just hold the adds and nuke the boss down. But I do warn you, um, if the boss is high enough and your DPS isn't high enough, um, those adds do heal enough, that one ad does heal enough to heal the boss through your DPS, but we made the decision to just uh, nuke through and not DPS down the ads. So we kill them, and now I'm just going to go ahead and get ready for the next pull, which I recommend saving Limber Break for, and also saving Hollow Ground for. So I wait for Stone Skin, I have full TP, and the mage is going to, or the bard's going to cast his mana song, so I don't really have to worry too much about mana. So I sprint all the way to the end of this room, and there's a real key part to this pull that I'm going to show you right here. So I pull those mobs here and I run to the corner of the room. The reason you run to the corner of this room is so you can line of sight those casters and bring them to a stacking position with all the other mobs so they can be cleaved down and they can be within range of the limit break. After I see the casters, I reposition myself so I have a clear angle on what I need to dodge and I just flash, 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 and once I'm um, out of mana to flash, I just spam Riot Blade, like I said before, 
And these mobs are really cla uh, fast here with the limit break. So that's it, guys. That's the guide. Um, you proceed from here to kill the boss as normal. Um, what I recommend for the boss, if your DPS is high enough, to just ignore the adds and nuke the boss down. Um, if not, you can kill the adds, which makes it go a lot smoother. Uh, but a lot of the times, healers volunteer to kill the adds uh, while your DPS just goes ahead and destroys the boss. So that's it for that, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see future content on strategy, guides, and I'm also going to add um, a section of just random videos and just to add some comic relief to the gaming world. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope to hear from you guys. Leave in the comment section below if you like the video or recommendations for future videos. See you all next time.